Right now, I'm in back of the Third Street Promenade, one of the busiest outdoor shopping plazas in Southern California, as far as I know. And what's really interesting about the back alley here, I'll explain in just a second. But first, I have a question from Jacob Spinney. Jacob wants to know my opinion on intellectual property and magic. Well, Jacob, the first problem with intellectual property and magic is that regular intellectual property law doesn't really work to our advantage when we want to keep something a secret. Magic is about secrets. Patents and copyrights are about telling the world what you created, especially what makes it special. So if you file a patent on a magic trick, you tell the world how it works, which in most cases makes it very easy for people to replicate it. So what's the solution? I don't know what the solution is, but I can tell you, you should think about the three ways in which you make money from an idea in magic. The first way, and the most important way, and sometimes seems novel to other magic creators, is you perform it. You have an idea and you perform it. That's what Penn and Teller do, that's what David Copperfield does. If you're a creative magician and you have creative ideas and you want to perform, well, just perform your ideas. Don't really worry about marketing them. Market your show and how novel it is. The second way you make money from one of these ideas is if you choose not to perform it, or if you're done performing it, or if you don't mind other people doing it, is you put it in the form of a DVD or a magic trick and then you sell it. You be the first person to capitalize it in that way. The third way is you go to somebody else and you say, okay, why don't you package this or publish this or present this DVD for me, and you get a part of that commission. Now, the problem with the third way is that you're often left up to somebody else to decide how much you get and you have to trust their integrity, which in magic we know sometimes doesn't always work out that well. I prefer the second way. I release my stuff my own. I publish it myself. I put up all my money myself, but in the end, I get the lion's share of the returns on it, which is a solution I'm happy with. But whatever works for you may depend upon what you want out of your ideas. Now, Jacob suggested a novel idea, and that was that if you have an idea, a really cool idea in magic, you tell the magic community, okay, if I raise X amount of dollars, I'm going to release this idea to the magic public. Now, the problem with that idea is I see it. And again, this may be something that would work, is that if you have this idea, and then you tell people, okay, I want to raise this much money before I release it, you have to show people something of the idea, like a video trailer or a clip or something like that. And magicians are clever on whole, and they're likely to figure out how this works. And you risk the chance of somebody else divulging your secret before you get a chance to sell it, or deflating the interest for your idea if you really present it as just the idea that has value. So that's a thing to think about. If you put up a video and say, okay, if I sell this many, I'll release it, you have the problem of somebody on YouTube like me, going out there and telling people how it works. Well, not like me in that case. So that might be a problem with that idea. But it's an interesting solution, and there are a lot of novel ideas out there. When Guy Jarrett released the Jarrett book a million years ago, he put out an ad in one of the magic magazines saying that his book was for sale, that he had something like a thousand copies, and for the first month the book would be, I don't know, twenty dollars. The next month, the price was going to go up to $40. The next month, the price would then go back up to like $80. And he said at the end of the third month, he was going to take all the remaining copies and burn them, which certainly put a sense of urgency into people who wanted to get the book. And it was a great way to do a pre-sale on a book, the idea that there would be no more books and you better buy it now before the price goes up. Jarrett was a mad genius, equally mad, equally genius, and that was an interesting idea. I don't know how well it worked for him, but it certainly got attention and it's something to think about. Now let me show you what's pretty cool about the back alley here in the Third Street Promenade. Every year, millions of people go through the promenade. What most of them don't realize is that in the back alley here, there is actually two theaters. This is the city garage, which does live shows. And just right down here, you can see the red and black building is another theater, a comedy theater. Right back here, behind everybody's noses, is some really cool local theater which is another way to think about how to bring your ideas to people. Sometimes you can do these things right on everybody's noses and succeed, which I think these theaters do a pretty good enough job, and they get nice reviews, and they have really interesting shows. So if you're a magician looking to profit from your ideas, take a step sideways, see what opportunities are there. These people have.